going to be showing you how to connect Claris Pro, uh, or more, sp more specifically, a Claris Pro file to Claris Studio. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with creating shadow tables using ODBC or JDBC data sources, this is a process that will feel very familiar to you. But before we go ahead and do that, uh, one quick thing that I'm going to show you is some changes that they've made to manage security. Uh, that will affect what database or what views you can see in the database when you go to add your Clary Studio data source. So in here now, you'll see that when we add or select an account, uh, it no longer allows you to authenticate using just the file login, but now you'll always authenticate using a Claris ID. Uh, this is really important for this process because the Claris ID that you use here is going to associate the Claris ID uh, with your Claris Studio instance, so that way you can have access to those Claris Studio table views. So you wanna make sure that you are using the Claris ID with the instance of Claire Studio that you plan to pull from. So now we'll go ahead and get out of this and I will show you how to add a Claire Studio data source. So first we'll go ahead and click file and then go down here to manage and then to database. And in here you'll have a very similar manage database screen to FileMaker Pro. Um, we'll go ahead and click over here to the relationships tab and we'll go ahead and add a new table occurrence using the plus button down here. And then in the specified table section, uh, you'll notice here at the top, it has data source. Um, and you had similar settings in uh, FileMaker Pro, but in Claris Pro, there's actually a new one here in Claris Studio data source. So this Claris Studio data source is going to allow us to pull data from Claris Studio Solutions. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then if you select one of these, this is going to be a list of all of the Claris Studio uh, views and tables that you have in your Claris Studio Solution. So we'll go ahead and select one of these to add um, and go ahead and click OK. And now you'll see that it added a new table occurrence for us. Um, now something you'll notice right off the bat is this table occurrence. Uh, the name of it is italicized, and that's because this is a shadow table. So for those of you who are familiar with ODBC and JDBC sources, you'll be quite familiar with this. But for those of you who are not, um, basically the difference between a normal table occurrence and a shadow table is a shadow table does not allow you to make a lot of changes and manage the, the database table like you normally would uh, with something that had been created natively in FileMaker Pro or Claris Pro. So if we go over here to the fields screen, we can see down here we have this new little section under Claris Studio Data Sources. And we can select this and we can see that over here that the field names are also italicized. Now these are the field names that came specifically from the Claris Studio view. Um, and so all of these fields were created on Claris Studio. Um, so in addition to them being italicized, you'll notice that the reason they're italicized is because there's a lot of changes that we can't make to them like we normally would be able to. So for example, the options button, the type button over here are grayed out and we can't make changes to those. You'll also notice that when you're creating new fields, uh, let's go and make an example field here. Um, that we are limited to the number of types that we can make. So we can only make types that are calculations and summaries. And that's pretty standard um, when it comes to external data sources. Um, like I said, for those of you who are familiar with ODBC and JDBC data sources, um, that's pretty normal. But something that is different is in, with Claris Pro data sources, uh, or Claris Studio data sources in Claris Pro, you can actually delete the fields. So um, we'll go ahead and click delete here. And uh, remember, we didn't add this field. This is a field that was brought to us from Claris Studio. So when you go to delete it, it'll ask, you know, like normally, uh, if you want to delete the shadow field, um, and it'll tell you that when you delete the shadow field, um, you can add it back by synchronizing the data source. So if we go ahead and delete it, we'll notice that it disappears, but it's not actually gone. It's just gone from our Claris Pro solution. So if we wanted to add that back, um, we could always click the sync button up here and it'll ask if we want to synchronize any fields from the shadow table with the data source and add any missing fields. So that'll include the ones that we deleted and had anyone made any changes to this view um, since 
we uh, last imported it, then uh, it would add those fields here as well. So now, in order to go ahead and save those changes, we'll go ahead and just click OK here. And now you have successfully learned how to add a Claris Studio instance as a data source to Claris Pro.